This is basically a list of my most embarrassing moments that I've had, but that sounds super cliche, and I prefer to call those mishaps WAPS moments instead. Like when you go to the store and forget to grab a cart for the 37 things on your shopping list, and you're already holding three of them, so you're just like... Wops. It's the best word I can think of to describe those misfortunes that will inevitably plague everyone's life at one point or another. Okay, so this first one requires a bit of backstory. So one day I was at my parents' house for some reason, and their neighborhood is one of those gated communities, but it's like, completely useless. To get in, you literally just press a button. No number pad, literally just a big green button. And it opens the gate. Anyone can get in. On the way out, you have to drive up so your car is about a foot away from the gate, which activates a sensor and it automatically opens up. Honestly, it's just annoying. Anyways, I was leaving the neighborhood, so I had to stop at the gate, and I noticed something on the ground. It looked like a dollar bill, but I couldn't tell for how much money. At first I thought it was just gonna be one of those fake bills where you open it up and it says, You know what's more important than money? Our Lord and Savior Cthulhu, or something like that. But... I decided to inspect it anyways, and it actually turned out to be a real, bona fide, honest-to-goodness $100 bill. I was ecstatic, and of course I did what any financially responsible person would do. I put it into savings in order to pay off my student loans. Just kidding. I decided to take $50 as cash and put the rest into my checking account and used it to justify buying a new pair of headphones. But, this is actually all about my trip to the bank in order to make said deposit. So, fast forward a couple weeks, because I'm lazy when it comes to adult things. I'm in the line at the bank, and when it's my turn, I hand the bank lady my $100 bill and tell her that I would like to deposit half of it into checking and take half of it as cash. She asks me what combination of bills I would like my $50 in. Pretty simple question, right? It's basic math, just give her a combination of bills that would total to $50. I passed AP Calculus in high school, I can math. I told her I would like $50 cash in a 5, two tens, and a 25. She said, Sorry, sir, can you repeat that? I'd like it in a 5, two tens, and a 25. I I'm sorry, I don't think I understood that. At this point, I'm wondering if I'm just talking too quietly or if I'm mumbling or something. So for the third time, I say very clearly, I'd like $50 in a 5, two tens, and a twenty-five. Sir, can you reiterate what bills you would like? I did the mental math. Five plus ten times two plus twenty-five equals fifty. What am I missing here? <clears throat> I would like fifty dollars in a five, two tens, and a twenty-five. Sir, you might want to rethink your bills. So I went through it again. I'd like a five two tens, and oh my god, $25 bills don't exist. That's not a thing. You can't do that. Whoops. Have you ever done that thing as a kid when you're at the grocery with your mom and you lose track of her? So when you find her, you're like, hey mom, I found you, and it turns out to be two dogs wearing the same coat as her, and it's the most embarrassing thing ever? Well, something similar to that happened to me, except I was a fully grown adult and the stakes were much higher. It was winter break, and I was out skiing with some friends, and they had somehow gotten a bit ahead of me down the slope. I was at the top, and looking down, I could see them at the end. Two guys, one in a red jacket, another in a blue. I figured they were just waiting for me to catch up, but two friends standing at the end of a nice, steep hill isn't an opportunity to pass up. If you've been skiing before, you probably know there's this thing you can do, where you build a bunch of speed, and then turn your skis really sharp to send a tidal wave of snow in front of you, and preferably onto another person. Well, they were perfect targets. I kicked off and started to build momentum. I didn't turn. I was trying to gain as much speed as possible, because the faster you're going, the greater the flurry you can make. About halfway down the hill, I was absolutely flying. I was gonna hit them like a frosty Pompeii. They'd just be frozen where they stood. Finally, the moment had come. I slammed on my ski brakes by quickly turning to the side and unleashed a tidal wave of ice. The flurry completely obstructed them from view, and I stopped so hard from my mad dive bomb that I fell on my side as I was sliding. It was a direct hit. 
I waited on my side for the snow to settle and to see my friend's reactions. The powder slowly drifted away and, to my horror, revealed two complete strangers wearing very similarly colored jackets to my friends. I was absolutely horrified, and so were they. In the interest of YouTube guidelines and video monetization, I'll give a slightly altered version of what was said. The original dialogue will be black, while the altered dialogue will be written in this nice blue color. Red Jacket started with, Hey, friend, what in the world was that for? Then Blue Jacket said something along the lines of, You really shouldn't have done that, acquaintance. And then I apologized profusely, but... What do you really say? I was a hitman, and I got the wrong targets. How do you apologize for that? So I quickly picked myself up and skied the rest of the way down in shame. <laughs> Wops. One of the first videos I ever made was about my problem with falling asleep in class, specifically in high school. Please don't go watch it. It's terrible. But some of my more memorable naps were actually taken in college. The first was in a physics lecture. I must have been especially tired one day because about five minutes into the lecture, I was asleep. Instead of taking at least, you know, 20 to 30 minutes to doze off like I did usually. When I woke back up, I must have looked like someone coming out of a 10-year coma. I expected to see the professor in the front saying physics words and with tables full of students around me listening to those words. Neither of those were happening. The lecture hall was empty except for about five people standing around some tables. Was this it? Had I hit rock bottom with falling asleep in class? Apparently I had, because I looked at the time and it was 15 minutes past since the lecture had ended. I mean, I wasn't upset that I got a nice restful nappy. The worst part was that I always sat in the back of the lecture hall, so about half of the class passed me with my face melting into the desk looking like a total goober. I hope that the professor talked about me. That's the least I would like to get out of it. I imagine that all the physics professors like to hang out and complain about their students, and that they would have a conversation where my feats are properly commemorated. One would say, ugh, I have this student who just won't get off their phone during class. And then another would say, yeah, there's this girl in my class who never seems to show up. And then my professor pipes up with, <sighs> this dude, he fell asleep at the beginning of the lecture. And even when the lecture was over, he kept sleeping. It was absolutely incredible. And then there was also the time where I fell asleep during final project presentations in art class. Our final was a two-part project. You basically had to make two drawings that had a common connection, but were also about opposing ideas. It was kind of confusing, but I like birds, so I decided I'd draw a couple of those, and one would represent order and nature while the other was artificial and chaotic. Or something like that. I thought it'd be cool to draw an eagle out of natural things like plants and rocks, and a vulture out of artificial things like wire and scrap metal. So, about four days before the due date, I started on bird number one. But let me tell you, this thing took forever. It was incredibly tedious. So, imagine you have a bird, but you replace all of its feathers with leaves. And then you have to draw those leaves. Because that's exactly what it was. It's, it's not a metaphor. That's just what I did. I was still working on bird number one at 12 a.m. the night before it was due. That was three and a half of those four days on Stupid Leaf Bird. But that was only half my project. I still had to whip up Artificial Chaos Bird in less than seven hours. And I actually did it. They turned out pretty dang well, here you go, have a look. But I still had to go to class and present it after staying up all night. I'm not one of those people that can function on no sleep. If I get eight solid hours of sleep, I function at the level of an average college student that got about four hours of sleep. But if I pull an all-nighter, I have the same mental capability of a geriatric sloth. So that's where my mind was at going into class. I make it through about two presentations before I'm drifting off to sleep. So... Let's take a moment to put ourselves in one of my classmates' shoes. It's your final project for art class. You've put more effort into this artwork than you have anything else this semester. It's your turn to show it off to your entire class. You walk up 
and put it on display in the front. You turn around. And this is my final project. (sighs) Teacher wakes sleeping boy up. You finish your presentation. Before I'm done, does anyone have any questions? (sighs) This pattern continued for about three more presentations until it was my turn. Wops. Lastly is a moment that still haunts me to this day. It happened about two years ago. I was taking my final for my pathophysiology class. About halfway through the test, I notice a girl get up. As I'm glancing up, I watch her turn in her test, and then... The teacher gives her a high five. Okay, that's kinda weird, but I made a mental note of it for when I turned in my own test. When my time came, I set my test down and put my hand out. He was somehow not expecting this, even though he had initiated the same interaction with another student. Was this not standard at this point? Had I misread the situation? It was too late to second-guess myself. I was already committed. He sees my hand out, and puts his hand out too, but sideways, as if to go for a handshake. Now I wasn't ready for this, at all, but I had enough reaction time to make a last-minute adjustment with my hand, so that it was also in a handshake position. But then he switches his hand position up on me again, to something that more closely resembled an unenthusiastic high five. But there's no time to adjust at this point. Our hands are already hurtling towards each other like two comets destined to make a cosmic explosion of poorly interpreted social cues. Alarms were going off in my head, because I could tell that some sort of terrible disaster was about to happen. And I was right. The resulting collision of our hands more closely resembled if someone took two small squid and slowly mashed them together. It was neither a handshake nor a high five, but some terrible abomination of the two. What closely followed our phalangeal contact was true physical pain. Not in my hand, but in my soul. It ran up my spine and sent a message to my brain which said, Time to cut off your hand. You don't deserve it. I had lost hand privileges. I clearly couldn't handle the responsibility of having a hand and therefore it had to be revoked. I just mumbled thanks and then left. I also knew that I could never have any sort of contact with that teacher ever again. Absolutely nothing. Because we both knew that the last interaction we had was that unholy collision of appendages And I don't want to have to face that ever again. And thus ends my most notable WAPS moments. If you didn't know this, I streamed the drawing portion of this video on Twitch. So if you're looking for somewhere to chat and just vibe a little bit, you should join. I put out announcements on Twitter. Links to both of those places will be in the description. Anyway, thanks, bye.